Hey guys, so before we continue, I think we should probably modularize uh, our server. Um, give it a more sensible project structure because uh, right now we have everything in this one file and as you can imagine, this will get a lot messier as we add more routes. So stuff like app.get, uh, API, login, and then the entire handler. So the project structure that we're going to use is, let's actually get into server, clear. And we're going to have uh, a routes folder to store all of our routes, such as slash. Uh, handlers to store the second part, the actual handler function. Uh, models is for our database. Well, we'll get to that soon, hopefully. And then, uh, since we're going to include authentication, we're also going to need a middleware folder. Middlewares with an S. And I believe that's it. All right, so now we have all these folders. Let's actually um, put them to use. So let's see, where would we want our error handler? Um, make a touch handlers index.js in here. And I'm just going to copy and paste these. So this is the error handler. So our error handler equals that and since we're using raw javascript here just node code uh, we actually have to export the error handler instead of this we're gonna use um, module.exports.errorhandler uh, what am I missing? Oh. wait oh this. Let's save to prettyfy and then we get rid of that really quick. Error handler. And error handler is coming from cons. I believe I just called it handle. And this is how you import your own stuff. So just dot slash handlers. So the relative path to the folder, and I <coughs> Express or Node will actually look at the index.js, the entry file of each folder. So you don't actually have to do this part, but that's just to make things a little easier. Uh, and then we're just going to do handle.error. Actually, let's call this errors. And errors to make sure that it in the right place. <clears throat> and then we're also going to need this. I'm going to put it here module.exports.notfound. Um, <clears throat> do we need this? Bit? Nah, that's fine. And then this will be handle not found. And as you can see, that already makes this file a lot cleaner. And all right, uh, with all of that setup done, I think we could finally do an initial commit. So git status, add everything, commits, initial commits. All right, what's next? Why is it still orange? And next, I think, so earlier we had to do a node index.js to start the server, and then we have to kill it every time we make a change. Um, clear this. <clears throat> what we're actually going to do, just to make things easier, is to npm install globally, so dash g, the flag for global. And we're going to install Nodemon. Um, I already have it installed on my machine, 
So what I'm going to do instead is going to add it as a dev dependency. Just so you see that it installs. Do, 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 this. Oh, that's right. I'm not connected to the internet. I can't do this. Okay, so slight hiccup. I didn't have internet. Um, but yeah, back to where we were. Uh, npm install dash d for dev dependencies. Nodemon. And then I think we're going to actually add um, all the other dependencies that we need just to make this into a real um, API server. That is a lot of stuff. Okay, so installing, we're going to need .env to hide our environment variables. Um, body parse, body dash parser uh, to be able to read uh, request bodies. And then cores so that we won't run into any cross-origin um, request problems when we, when we communicate with our client side. And that's all we need for now. And while that installs, I'm going to open up our entry point, the index.js, and import all of those things into the file. So const, what was it? Cores, require, cores, oops, const, body parser, require, body dash parser. And that will allow us to be able to use this as a real application. So uh, all cores and body parser is, uh, they're just express middlewares. So we could just use them like this. Uh, but we must remember to initialize them. And then app.use body parser. And we only need to parse JSON data. So that's all we need to do. Um, and then finally, up at the top, uh, before our entire application, the first thing that needs to run is um, the .env file. Dot .env .config. And what this allows us to do is to create private variables um, that you don't actually want to share on on a website like GitHub. Yeah. GitHub or GitLab or whichever one you end up using. Um, just to see it in action, we're actually going to make one right now. And as you can see, it's already hidden by our gitignore. And we're going to create an environment variable of ports, 4000. And to access any environment variable, you can just do a process dot env dot and then the name of the variable so port and now when we run this just do a node mod you can see that the 4000 is coming from our environment variables because it's not stated anywhere else in this file and just to show the power of node mod um, any changes that you save will restart the server. That actually was not saved, so let's do a... Oh no, it worked. Save again, service restarted. Okay, let's... Um, how long is this video? Uh, well, that's fine. Let's actually start creating our models. So to do that, we need something to connect our app to our database, and we're going to use Mongoose. So npm install Mongoose, I think that's all we need, right? Let me check really quick. Um, yep, that's all we need. Actually, this video might be getting a little long. I'm going to set up all the models um, in the next video. So 